We all have habits, don't we? Habits can be humorous, annoying, or even empowering. Some habits might be glaring or perhaps noticed by those just closest to us, or perhaps even hidden. Mental habits fall into that category. For example, I know I have the mental habit of always wanting to know what's next. Sometimes that mental habit serves me well, sometimes not. But regardless, mental habits influence how we look at things and how we take action. More comprehensive than habits are mindset. But mindset is an imprecise term. It's not been used much in scientific literature. Even the term itself is a newcomer, just gaining popularity. But we do know it's comprised of more than just mental habits. For those seeking more precise terms, ones that have been the subjects of a lot of literature, I suggest that mindset is the amalgam of dispositions, attitudes, and motivations. Hi, I'm Doug Melton. Thank you for joining us today. Welcome to this short course where we'll talk more about mindset. The format is simple. We'll go through a series of topics to further explore mindset, but with a tone of discovery. We hope that you'll join us on this course. It's designed for both current network members and also as an introduction to the network. I frequently benefit from visually organizing, like ordering things along axes. Let's do a mindset map. Maybe not the type you're thinking about. Let's create two axes. The thinking doing axis. We'll put thinking on the left, doing on the right. And let's also put an axis that represents things that are automatic and things that are intentional. Now just to get us oriented on this map, let's put a couple of items. For example, if you're going to go to a concert, that's a doing, and it's probably very intentional. That would be here. If you have, say, a morning routine, that's probably become somewhat automatic and it's doing. Let's say that you're planning the day. Planning the day would be perhaps intentional, but certainly more in the thinking category. Now, for example, let's talk about something more sophisticated, like design. Where would design end up on a map like this? Well, it's partly doing, it's partly thinking, it's certainly intentional, so it might cover a large territory like this. Especially some of the design techniques that push us to work with customers or design thinking techniques that, that promote empathy. Now, let's take a couple of other items. For example, let's talk about where would reflection be? Some of you have assignments where you ask your students to reflect. Reflection is very intentional thinking. And where would behaviors be? Behaviors we often think of as somewhat automatic, but things that you do. So behaviors might be down here. Now the question is really, where is mindset? Kind of helps us organize things. We'll put mindset and maybe mindset and habits in this area. Habits might be something that's a little more automatic, but certainly covers both thinking and doing. While mindset is not precisely defined, there's a lot that's been written, both in the research and popular literature. It helps us understand. The network has a nice list of good books that you might want to take a look at. Each one has got a perspective that's useful for understanding mindset and our shared mission to produce graduates with an entrepreneurial mindset. So you might ask, why should you care as an educator? In a world that's changing and leveling faster than ever in history, an entrepreneurial mindset is more critical than ever for both global well-being and the individual success of your students. Step one, decide for yourself if mindset is important. In our short introductory video, I may not be able to convince you of the importance of mindset, so I would suggest for the global perspective, you might want to take a look at The Coming Jobs War, maybe even chapter seven in that book. For an individual take, you might see the book A Whole New Mind or The Startup of You. There's a lot to recommend. The variety of perspectives is helpful, ranging from policy and education to engineering design, from psychology to neuroscience from a deeper understanding of what is curiosity and what is value. One author in the network has written about creativity and innovation for engineers, relying on how an increased understanding of neuroscience can inform both learners and educators. Now we know that learning occurs through repetition and insight. As an educator, I'm certain you've witnessed someone develop an insight, the moment when they say, now I get it, 
That moment is the bellwether of learning. Have you ever wondered what happens physically in that moment? Dr. James Zoll, professor of biology and of biochemistry, spent 25 years of research on cell-to-cell -cell communication, protein folding, cell membranes, and biosensors, and then he turned his interest toward understanding how brain research can inform teaching. He begins his book, The Art of Changing the Brain, with the line, learning is about biology. Sensory input and emotions affect dopamine and serotonin levels, which help determine how cells communicate and over time create neurological branches that are the foundation of long-term memory. If we step out of cellular biology and neuroscience to a more macro level, there's a reasonable question you might be asking. Isn't a student's mindset just part of their personality traits? Well, the brain is more plastic than you'd think. I know everyone says that, but what does it really mean? According to Dr. Merzenich, a leader in brain plasticity, the young brain is rapidly assembling every sensor input. But rather marvelously, the older brain only permits change when it judges that change to be important, rewarding, or good for it. That's our cue for step two. Let your students in on it. Because it matters only if deemed important, decide how you're going to let your students in on changing mindset. A mindset researcher, Carol Dweck, wrote a book with that title. She says that the awareness of thinking about thinking is a key to changing one's mindset. Again, you don't have to necessarily invent methods for metacognition. There are resources. Sandra McGuire, a former chemistry professor, learning advocate and author, offers 10 serious-minded strategies to students she calls metacognitive strategies. She writes, when students employ metacognition, they become consciously aware of themselves as problem solvers, which enables them to actively seek solutions to any problems that they may encounter, rather than relying on others to tell them what to do or to answer their questions. As they make the transition from being passive learners to proactive learners, students gain the ability to monitor and plan and control their mental processing. In other words, instead of staggering through a maze using instinct alone to look for the cheese, they become aware that they need to plot a course and search systematically for the cheese, keeping track of what works and what doesn't. The significance of the motivation construct was acknowledged in the 40s and 50s. That led to work that divided motivation into both intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. Perhaps the most widely acknowledged book why We Do What We Do by Edward Desi suggests that there are three innate psychological needs. One, relatedness. Two, autonomy. And three, mastery or competence. In 2006, Desi and others published a study that demonstrated the effect of intrinsic goal framing compared to extrinsic goal framing and no goal framing. It produced deeper engagement in learning activities, better conceptual learning, and higher persistence at learning activities. Now others have added a fourth, purpose. The model has been applied to engineering education. In one instance, a computer engineering one course was redesigned based on this model. Three themes emerged. Team projects promoted relatedness, relatedness provided space for competence building, and without relatedness and competence, motivation declined. Upon a reflection of the course redesign, students regarded autonomy as one-sixth as important as relatedness. Interesting. So far, we've talked about mindset and one of its primary components, motivation. Step one was acknowledging the importance of mindset. Step two was letting the students in on it. We rely on neuroscience and psychology for those two steps, but what about entrepreneurial mindset? We'll take a page from entrepreneurial studies for this. How do you teach your students to be entrepreneurially minded? Let's illustrate entrepreneurially minded learning, or EML, with an analogy. First, begin by acknowledging that there is a basic need. Among other things, we depend on food for human flourishing. But beyond, say, the fundamental nutrition, there's more to it. Is the first step to figure out the dish or to start with the ingredients you have? That's the wonderfully simple contrast in causal thinking versus effectual thinking. In a study by Dr. Sarah Sarasvathy, she found the entrepreneurs often start with ingredients. That's effectual thinking. Couple that with an idea of developing something that is satisfactory or what she calls satisficing, 
and you have a pattern that is counter to most thinking processes that are taught in engineering. Thinking like that is part of being an entrepreneur or an intrapreneur within a company. Engineering needs both causal and effectual thinking and knowing when one is appropriate. How would your projects and assignments change if some included aspects of effectual thinking? At the same time, the three C's are in play. Curiosity promotes our inventiveness and unveils information and opportunities that we would otherwise walk past. Connections helps us gain insight. Creating value keeps us making dishes that others would want. Step three is connecting entrepreneurial mindset to what you know works in the classroom. Couple ideas from entrepreneurial mindset with your teaching style and strategies and do some experiments. Let's use an analogy to illustrate the importance of mindset. A surgeon's skills are valuable, but perhaps they reach their maximum potential when coupled with a mindset that emphasizes care for the human condition. A police officer's skills include driving, handling a firearm, and communicating authoritatively. They are valuable to society when coupled with a mindset that emphasizes civil safety and rule of law. And an engineer's skills are most valuable when coupled with a mindset that includes a curiosity about the future, an ability to connect information through systems thinking, and an emphasis on creating value for others. To start the journey of changing the practice of engineering education, our network needs a shared roadmap that identifies an expanded skill set and elements of an entrepreneurial mindset. Our map is the Keen framework. You can find it online or in any issue of the Keen Scene. To start our orientation, let's take a look at the skills section. The center column should be familiar. From top to bottom, it represents almost every engineering design cycle, from a freshman introduction to a senior design course. But to support the development of an entrepreneurial mindset, we need to expand the engineer's collection of tools. The idea is to include some additional tools as a normal part of engineering. They fall into two categories. These skills are readily taught, learned, and assessed. They might not create the mindset, the habits of mind, but they are necessary to support its development. The first category of additional skills falls under the broad term of opportunity. The second category of skills falls under the heading of impact. For example, one of them includes communicate an engineering solution in economic terms. Another is communicate an engineering solution in terms of societal benefit. These are essential skills for any engineer who wishes to create an impact through their work. When I was trained as an engineer, the center column titled design was billed as the ultimate act within engineering. But in fact, the greatest contribution of an engineer is creating value. You've only seen the first part, the skill set. To maximize the potential of that skill set, it must be coupled with a mindset. Those habits of mind that are critical and inseparable from the skills themselves. As you're aware, mindset is not a focus within traditional engineering programs. Keen is a group of educators who have recognized the importance of intentionally developing an entrepreneurial mindset. In addition to skill set, you'll find a section of the Keen framework with educational outcomes. It begins with a network statement about the engineer we need. Look on the left-hand side from top to bottom. You'll see the engineer we need has an entrepreneurial mindset coupled with engineering thought and action expressed through collaboration and communication and founded on character. That statement has been expressed in a variety of behaviors. These are more about patterns of thinking than individual specific skills. Many of the outcomes in blue are likely developed by your current educational programs. One convenient expression of an entrepreneurial mindset is the three C's. Curiosity, connections, and creating value. They're fitting containers for some key ideas. The nuance within these ideas is contained below in what we often call a starter set or prototype for creating educational outcomes. For example, in the curiosity category, the starter set includes demonstrate constant curiosity about our changing world. That's a curiosity about trends of all types. A second item promotes a contrarian view. Some intrepid network members have even integrated debate within their classroom. When members of the network talk about connections, 
They want their students to be able to habitually integrate information from many sources to gain insight. Connections is about information. Students should also assess and manage risk. Since it's part of a mindset attribute, that might range from how they think about an engineering project to how they're conscientious about safety in the laboratory. Creating value is perhaps the most important of the three C's. Network members sometimes extend this idea to creating value for others. That emphasizes the stakeholder in all contexts. Because creating value is seldom easy, the starter set includes a mindset outcome aimed at tenacity, persisting, and learning through failure. Those are the educational outcomes associated with mindset in the framework. As you create or modify curriculum, alter degree programs, or even design extracurricular activities, or just interact with your students, the framework serves as our shared roadmap. By completing these steps, you're now ready to contribute to the community that is transforming engineering education, and more importantly, profoundly impact the students you teach.